Hello, and welcome to Talking GTA Episode 4. I'm your host, Hugo One, and this is a podcast about all things Grand Theft Auto related. So we got a lot of stuff to talk about today. I'm going to recap some of the stuff we talked about last week, like uh, GTA Plus and some of the topics that we went into uh, with phone calls and emails. We also have a ton of phone calls and emails to get to this week. Uh, If you want to be included in the episode and you want your email read or your phone call played, please, for phone calls, call 1-818-691-5807 and leave a message. Uh, If you just want to email, talkinggta69 at gmail.com. We'll get your email in. Um, and we will try to get it on the air. I have to, uh, kind of cut out some of them this week because, uh, we're running out of like time. I only got a certain amount of time. I can upload, uh, episodes every month. So we got to be quick and, uh, get it in under the deadline, um, for now. And, uh, we could, uh, expand with longer episodes in the future, but we shall see. Also, I want to mention that, uh, if you heard the last few weeks, I was uh, reading all the emails myself and I was kind of losing my voice. So, uh, I grabbed, uh, my little friend, Justin and brought him here to read some of the emails uh, so I don't have to read them all and I can just listen to what you guys have to say. So that's coming up. Um, and we have a few new topics to get into today, uh, including MC8, the voice of Ryder, and what happened with him when he recorded the lines for Ryder and what's going on between him and Rockstar. So uh, lots to talk about. Let's get right into it. You want the chainsaw, gringo? Last week, we talked about a number of different things uh, because of your phone calls and your emails and stuff, and we got a lot of good feedback. I wanted to get into that right now. Some uh, comments on YouTube. Uh, I Sheet from Asshole says, I assume the special skills in GTA 5 were based on refined reflexes due to years of experience they don't actually slow down time that's why franklin has a different ability than michael because their experiences are very different from each other that's my interpretation also it creates a more dynamic gameplay experience so i understand where you're coming from and i i like the specials but it just was weird because it didn't really fit into the kind of realism of gta and i mean they're moving away from super realism anyway but stuff like slowing down time when driving if he has these super mega driving skills why can't he just drive like that all the time why does the special run out why does he have to regenerate it and how does he regenerate it uh and with trevor's special ability he just takes Uh, bullets constantly and if he has that ability why isn't he just superman and he just never takes any damage at all so i didn't i it just it was weird how it kind of fit in there i understand how you're trying to connect it to a like a realistic i guess ability somebody's really good at shooting so michael it feels like it's slower for him or franklin's good at driving so it feels like it's slower for him but it was just something that had never been a thing in uh gta games prior to this so that's why it was kind of uh odd to have it there but like i said since i when i use it i like it so uh, if it's in the next one that's fine uh next one uh maybe it could be like a cop that wants to be good but finds himself in situations where he can be either one and you get to make that decision it affects the story in the gta as a whole or something from edf ranger on youtube talking about uh the idea of playing as a cop maybe in a future gta um that would be cool i'm not a huge fan of kind of having the ability to make the decision of where the story goes i want them to write a good story and i want to follow it and i want to enjoy it i don't really enjoy making decisions about which way the story is going to go um some people do like that and that's fine uh but me personally i just i'm just not a huge fan of that at all um Another comment about weather in video games uh, would be neat to have a hurricane in GTA 6 if it's in Miami, a mission to survive a hurricane from Code R1. That would be cool, actually. Uh, So you incorporate the weather into the game um, uh, as far as a hurricane goes. And then um, I I guess part of that being in the game is you do have to survive and you have there's flooding or there's damage or there's this that and the other and it's more than just you know killing a bad guy so there's more to the game and it is it brings an element of weather so thank you for that that's a good one um uh, so we also got some feedback on gta plus we talked about gta plus a bit last time 
Um, let's see. Daxter says, I would be fine with GTA Plus if it weren't a complete ripoff. They had the ability to make it worth it, but they went for the cheap shot as usual. Um, this is just flat out not true. You can think that it's not a good deal if you want, but based on where what what they offer, what you get, basically, one of the benefits of GTA Plus is you get $500,000 every month, $500,000 uh, in GTA Online. A $500,000 shark card is $10. GTA Plus is $6 a month. So already you're ahead of the game if you buy shark cards. If you don't, then why are you getting GTA Plus to begin with? But as far as whether it's a good deal or not, just based on what we have here already, it makes it a good deal because you don't just get the money. You also get all these other things like uh, vehicles and discounts on more shark cards if you want to buy them and whatever else, CEO, VIP, MC abilities, any of that stuff. So people that are deep into GTA Online and, and do pay for in-game money, then you know that's fine that's uh, that that is a deal for them it would make sense to do it it would not make sense to continue to just buy shark cards on their own without getting gta plus therefore that makes this a good deal to those it applies to obviously if you don't play online this wouldn't apply to you so it doesn't matter whether it's a deal or not because you're not buying the shit that comes with it so uh we have also an email um uh, about uh, GTA Plus and subscriptions and shark cards and stuff they wanted to get to, uh, and I'll let Justin read it. Go for it, Justin. Hey, Hugo. My name is Austin, and I just wanted to say I'm loving the podcast. Great idea, and keep up the good work. I've been a long-time viewer, mostly on YouTube, because I am not always able to catch streams live, but it is always enjoyable, and I appreciate all that you do. I wanted to talk about subscriptions, shark cards, and grinding. In one aspect I completely agree with you that grinding and just playing the game is rewarding in itself. I play a lot of different games other than GTA and I have never minded grinding to get the things that I want in game however, the prices for vehicles, agencies, offices, apartments, etc is way too high in my opinion. I don't get to play GTA Online or any other video games a lot because most of my time is spent grinding IRL just to make ends meet working 6 days a week. I don't have endless hours to grind out missions or heists to afford anything in game which leaves me with only one option which is buying shark cards. I don't always have the extra money to pour into shark cards just so I can enjoy the game. I recently played the Doctor DLC which was fun and had a cool story to it. But I had to buy a shark card just so I could even start playing that DLC. The ending payout of that DLC was $1 million which honestly doesn't get you much in game and doesn't balance out for the money I had to sink into it just to play. I spent about 3 weeks of my extra free time with a buddy just to get a measly $1 million which doesn't even buy you a car anymore. Not to mention the upgrades. I feel like this is so unbalanced for players like me who don't have the extra money or time to pay to one work grind. Some video games you can spend 2 hours to grind and get what you want with a lot of other rewards and ways to make money more easily or receive new usable and viable items along the way. GTA Online has hit the point for me where it is not even worth it to grind. Especially because most missions outside of the DLCs have payouts less than $30,000. I would have to grind that for months just to get a vehicle and buy that time Rockstar will have released one or two more DLCs with several items costing millions and millions more of in-game dollars. I believe with GTA 6's online the in-game economy will need to be completely revamped so that grinding is possible. It is to the point where it seems that Rockstar is forcing most players to buy shark cards or pay for the subscription just to enjoy the game they have already sank hundreds of dollars into IRL. They just seem very money hungry at this point and do not truly care about their player base as long as the money is rolling in from the people people who can afford all the extras. Sorry for the long message, but I appreciate your time and keep on keeping on Mang. Uh, thank you, Austin, for the email. Appreciate it. And thank you, Justin, for reading that. Welcome to the show, Justin. Uh, but uh, I understand that it can be frustrating that you want the nicest new car or the nicest new apartment or whatever new stuff is coming out, but you don't have the money to get it. But it, isn't that real life? You know, I understand that... that um, that grinding to get the money for these things it seems like work but it is playing a video game what else what would be the point of you know the game itself if it didn't have 
you working towards a goal, working towards reward. So I feel like this is just how video games are. And uh, these these DLCs that they put out, uh, if they're worth just playing, if, you, if you're getting entertainment from just the DLCs and you want to just play them, then it would make sense that you would buy them. They're not they're not selling them, though. They're free. They're a part of the thing, and you just need to, whatever, have the money to play it or whatever. So maybe you just can't play it right when it releases unless you want to pay. You pay, and then you can play. Uh, or you can just wait and work and, and get some money and, and get into it, you know? So uh, I, I... But I do agree with you as far as... Uh, I, the price of everything has gone so high up that it, there does need to be a reset within the next online world because it just is outrageous. And hopefully they kind of keep it, they don't make it so outrageous, like cars are too expensive. The nicer cars, obviously, they'll be more expensive, but regular stuff uh, will be cheaper. So, you know, we'll see what direction they go with it. But thank you for uh, your opinion on that. I appreciate it. That was a well thought out email. Thank you, friend. Uh, and thank you to anybody with uh, good positive feedback. Uh, there, I've seen some negative stuff. And this is just kind of how things go, especially when it comes to something like a gta plus or a uh the definitive editions the gta trilogy definitive edition uh, instead of just not liking it people think they need to take on anybody who does like it and they go after people who are just enjoying themselves and enjoying whatever uh service or game or whatever they have and those people come after them and call them stupid oh you're stupid for liking this oh you're stupid because you know, uh, you pay them money for this game or whatever, whatever the case may be. Um, and obviously the ones I've read today, nobody said that, but I did see stuff like that. Um, and it's, it's so fucking irritating. So just, just shut the hell up and go find something else to do because people can like things that you don't like. You don't have to like those things, but those people can like them. So just, just shut up. Stop going after the players. All right. Don't hate the player, hate the game. But anyway, thank you guys for uh, that stuff. We got a whole lot of other emails and comments and phone calls for later um but first i want to talk about uh the character of Ryder and uh mc8 who voiced him in san andreas ain't no og like a grove og okay so basically weekly uh, uh for years i get people that want to talk about the character of Ryder in san andreas um, and they're always talking about how they, most people like him. I am not a huge fan of Ryder, to be honest with you. I thought he was an asshole to CJ. CJ was putting in work, doing everything right. At some point you see him and Ryder kind of connect and, and are like, you know, oh, for life, for life, CJ, you heard, and, and they're homies and stuff. And they worked well together. Although CJ put in most of the work himself while Ryder was just along for the ride. But, uh, the topic that most people want to talk about is why did, why did Rockstar, make Ryder a bad guy clearly he wasn't supposed to be a bad guy but they changed that and they made him a bad guy anyway so uh I'm not going to get into that topic uh, about all the different uh reasons why that may be the case there's uh videos on YouTube you can look up if you want to learn about that but somehow people have decided that the reason this happened was because MC8 who voiced uh Ryder either a got it had some kind of beef with rockstar and didn't want to work with them anymore so they had to take old lines of his and put him into the mission where Ryder gets killed spoiler alert sorry um or mc8 went to jail or something something along these lines hey hugo did you hear that the reason Ryder's a bad guy is because mc8 uh wanted more money from rockstar and they wouldn't give it to him so they killed his character and i'm like and every time they say this i'm like okay where does it say that who told you i well, this is something i heard on the internet i heard this it's a thing you don't know about that and i'm like no i don't i don't i haven't seen this anywhere people just keep uh, mentioning it to me and I don't know what you're talking about. So, uh, I found a couple, a couple of pieces of evidence that will prove that this is not true at all. Um, first I'm going to play a clip of MC8 on a podcast with Talib Kweli and they're talking about MC8 doing the voice of Ryder. Uh, it's a few minutes long, but it's pretty interesting. So hopefully you'll like this. Take a listen. Um, you're the voice of Ryder. Right. In Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. And like Jazz was saying, 
you have that voice. Yeah, perfect. You know, um, that voice, obviously, your voice was obviously developed from these experiences. Right. But what, what was it like being part of such an iconic video game? Oh, man. Shout out to Rockstar Games. Mm -hmm. um, One of my favorite games. <laughs> Rockstar had, had used a couple of my songs in their first Grand Theft Auto. Mm -hmm. And shout out to DJ Pooh. Um, yeah, definitely shout out to DJ Pooh. DJ Pooh basically was in the works on GTA. Mm -hmm. Grand Theft Auto, the one I did the voiceover in. And uh, first of all, let me pause this. DJ Pooh, if you don't know, was a big part of uh, helping make San Andreas happen. Uh, he connected Young Melee with Rockstar. Young Melee, the voice of CJ, of course. And then here you hear him talking about uh, getting MC8 uh, in as the voice of Ryder. And he helped do a lot of writing and stuff. And you can hear DJ Pooh on West Coast Classics and GTA 5. And I think he was in that... That DLC with Dr. Dre, uh, there's a um, DJ Pooh uh, character in the game now. So I uh, just wanted to mention that. And I guess from the songs they had listened to and they heard my voice and they were like, oh, man, he'd be perfect because they had, I guess, modeled this character after looking like Easy e mm -hmm. in the game. So they wanted a distinctive voice for the character. Mm -hmm. you know? Okay, I want to but cut in here as well because he makes a good point and it's important that he says that. He says they modeled the character to look like Easy e So many people always tell me, they say, oh, that is Easy e That character is Easy e The look is the look, but, uh, you know, not the other things. And uh, I'm glad he said it like that. I had never done any voiceovers or nothing like that. You know, I wasn't in it. Look at me talking about voiceovers. You know? <laughs> Fancy. So they called me up and said they were doing this video game, and I'm thinking they just wanted to use another one of my songs, but mm -hmm. they wanted me to fly to New York and basically be in the game. And I was like, doing what? Mm -hmm. They were like, we want you to voice the character. So I thought that was a tremendous uh, opportunity, you know, for uh, people who hadn't heard of MC8 or heard a song or whatever. It was just another uh, a, a pillar in my career of trying to establish who I was as an artist and just a well-around person. So when they contacted me, I said, yeah, I'll come do it. And I went to New York, you know, hung out with Primo for three days. And shout out to Primo once again. Shout out to Primo. Uh, hung out with Rockstar and Primo and in the studios. And basically they played the video game for me on the screen and gave me a script. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I sat there and I just basically voiced my character to everything I was seeing him doing on the screen. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of fucking work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I did that too for um, Mark Echo getting up a uh, video game. I played right. the main character, Train. Um, and it was like a couple of weeks of... Yeah. I remember my voice. I lost my voice doing this shit. Yeah, I was there for about... Uh, maybe five days. Yeah. So it was long, but it was worth it because, like, I, I, you know, I get people now, you know, even beyond music and records, and they recognize, oh, my son plays that game, or my son, <laughs> oh, we were, son sit we, we were people. sitting up last night, right. and I didn't even know that was you. And, you know, because I coach football, so a lot of mm -hmm. my kids is like, oh, that's coach right there, that's coach. <laughs> and the parents come to practice the next day and be like, I never knew that was you. Right. He plays that game all day. And now <laughs> that I hear the voice, no, I'm like, right. that's now you, coach. Now you can't <laughs> unhear it. Yeah, so, so uh, it was a good opportunity. Yeah. Okay, so there you go. Uh, you hear him say it was a good opportunity. You hear him say shout out to Rockstar. Clearly, he, you know, just went and read the lines and he played the character and that's what he was going to do. So whatever happened with Ryder's character itself, that was on Rockstar. That was their own thing. But it doesn't have anything to do with MC8 from what we hear here. Um, here's something else from this interview that I thought was interesting about MC8. When you Do you play the game? When you play the game, uh, like... Actually, I've never played it. You've never played it? Heard your voice? No. Are you a gamer at all? I'm a gamer, but I'm a sports gamer. Yeah, Madden, a Madden uh, NBA. I might play a little Call of Duty, but... Mm -hmm. Um, my son is a GTA gamer all day. Man, you gotta you gotta play the game and just go around shooting people and, and fucking look, prostitutes. I know I'm not the <laughs> I'm not the cleanest cut motherfucker, but that game is vicious. Yeah, it is. That shit is vicious. You the, know from the lines you had to man, read. the women, <laughs> and the women, and all the man, yeah. they, they be doing some wild shit. Oh, I love it. I <laughs> man, kids shouldn't be playing that game. They, and should they really not. shouldn't. They should. It's some explicit shit in that game, man. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, so there you go. Those uh, are some of his thoughts about uh, San Andreas, which was pretty interesting. Um, one other thing that I wanted to point out about this uh, was a user on GTA forums by the name of Le Purel Canadian uh, said uh, sent a message to MC8 on Twitter. And he said, hello, A, you probably will not see this message, but it's worth a try, right? It's something about the old days when you were working at Rockstar Games at GTA San Andreas. Why did they kill you in the game? Because you should have been on the good part with CJ and the homies, not with Big Smoke. You weren't even mentioned in the Green Saber mission, not even after you didn't have uh, dialogue in your death mission, Pier 69. I was hoping you could answer a question. Did you just quit? Because I suppose they killed you because you didn't do more dialogue lines. I don't know. Maybe you will see this in some years. Happy Easter. And MCA responded and said, that's all they wanted me to do. So clearly it you know he didn't quit he didn't have an issue with rockstar um the, the everything that you can find online points to him just you know b doing his job as a voice actor so whatever happened with Ryder's character that's a question for rockstar and it would be something interesting to hear from them about uh, hopefully one day they'll have some kind of tell all or they'll give us some behind the scenes information about this stuff and we'll know more um but uh there you go so if anybody asked you about mc8 and what happened with him and rockstar you can uh point to that you can also point to the fact that he has a song in gta 5 not just like they used one of his songs which they did but he like has a one specific to the game so clearly he's he was good with rockstar then and he's good with rockstar now so uh that is uh all you got to tell them let the people know people are out here spreading bad information and we're gonna put an end to it because we got the real information we got the facts we come with the facts they come with the bullshit speaking of come with the bullshit something similar to this um last week we talked about a uh a thank you page for gta 5 and gta online where it lists the names of all the people that have worked on the game through the years and um uh, it, there was like 5,000 names on it, an outrageous amount. So uh, basically this page had existed before. They added more names to it. More people have worked on it. It got updated. It's been updated through the years, whatever. But people have kept coming to me and saying, hey, did you see they're not updating GTA Online anymore? And I'm like, what are you talking about? Uh, uh, but please post that in Discord. Please let me know where you're getting this information. And they don't really have an answer, but people kept saying that. They kept saying, do you see they're not updating gta online anymore it's over it's done and i just could not figure out where they were getting it from and it comes from apparently the fact that this thank you page was updated they thought it was a thank you like uh, a final thank you that it's over it's done with all that stuff and oh, while it could be it there's nothing that says that specifically so people are just making assumptions about it and that's not necessarily true so uh, please be careful with the information you spread online and stuff. And I know I'm not, I, I used to be very against all kinds of rumors and stuff like that, but it's worth talking about, but we have to, as, as long as we're labeling them as rumors and speculation, then it's fine, you know, but people say this stuff as if it's the fact. And so the person that hears it, they take it as fact, and then they go and spread it to somebody else. And they're just so confident because somebody told them that they heard it. So uh, the, there's two examples of maybe let's like slow our roll and and figure out what's really going on. Um, but thank you for listening to me rant and rave about that. Let's move on to your email. Hey, little mama, what's popping? Okay, got a couple quick uh, comments from YouTube. Uh, is there any GTA characters that you wished had never died, you didn't have to kill from Sprunk 51 Energy? Uh, people always say that about Ryder, but I don't, I don't, I wanted to kill Ryder. He was a dick, so I didn't mind that. Um, Smoke had to be dealt with. Uh, Lance, I guess, would be the one. I think, I mean, after Lance betrayed you, you had to. But I think he just, if he wouldn't have just fucked around and betrayed you, then I would have liked to have kept him around. Um, uh, Kenji wasn't bad. He had to kill Kenji in, in GTA 3. Uh, 
So, yeah, I guess there's a few, but thank you for the comment, friend. Appreciate it. Uh, next one. Man, imagine a GTA or DLC with Caesar or the border between U.S. and Mexico. Lots of sand, drugs, and cartel wars. And maybe it can explain, like, why Caesar had to move to the U.S. or something like that. It sounds amazing. Like a bright, Breaking Bad vibe from Daniel. Yeah, I agree. I think that would be awesome, actually. Um, uh, I think they have so many characters in these old games that they could reconnect with for new storylines, but don't, you know, they've moved on and decided different universes and stuff. But... Yeah, that one with Caesar would be great, even if it wasn't with Caesar. Something uh, in that area, like a Breaking Bad style, would be totally awesome. Thank you, friend. What are your thoughts on realistic graphics as opposed to a more interactive world? I'm under the impression that better graphics take up computing power, which takes away from a more interactive world. If you could see damage caused by a gunfight all the way up to an entire building being destroyed or mind-blowing graphics, which would you choose for GTA 6? Examples of a more dynamic world would be anything uh, that can be interacted with. You can see people in buildings and enter buildings. Anything can be damaged. In other words, like Minecraft. I imagine it could have a fascinating gameplay result. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. I think the graphics are fine where they are. I don't think other games are like just totally out of this world. Amazing. And uh, I don't need to see the testicles of a horse or or the sweat dripping down somebody's face in a cutscene or anything like that. I am fine with I would I'm, I prioritize gameplay over graphics. Uh, but that was from my sheet from asshole. Thank you for the comment. Thank you all. Okay, remember, we have Justin here in the studio, and he's going to read the emails, and I'll respond. Uh, all right, Justin, go ahead. What's the first one? Yo, yo, Hugo, wanted to ask, do you think GTA slash RDR games are too big? Too slow? Seems like it can take forever to get to wherever you want to go. I understand the appeal of realism and how advanced video games have become using mocap for everything, etc. And tab, for example, the supercars. Planes and jets never feel like they're going as fast as they actually would. I'm sure that's down to making the game run smoothly. But if these games are gonna start to become as detailed and as a close to reality as possible then I'd like to see some real speed out of the higher end of transport and tactics especially if the map is bigger than our DR2s. Good lord. Keep up the good shit my man you're killing it. From Rips. Thank you, Rips, for the uh, email. Appreciate it. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Especially in Red Dead where there was this huge map um and you had to ride a horse everywhere not just you could it wasn't cars it wasn't the supercars that we have in gta 5 or planes or helicopters or anything like that so red dead yes yeah, so very slow uh to get around uh but in gta 5 uh i feel like the cars you know can go pretty fast and the city's big enough to where uh you know it seems uh, right. Planes, I understand what you mean. There could be planes. Some of these planes that they have now should be like supersonic ultra speed, but uh, they aren't as fast as you would think they were. Um, but that I was flying one the other day uh, and I felt like, wow, this map is way bigger than I thought. But maybe it's because the plane was just going too slow. So, yeah. And the next one, if it's GTA 6... Uh, if it's a bigger map, then yes, make the make uh, the flights faster across uh, the map. But if it is GTA Six and it's uh, you know just like South Florida or something, then what? How how big could it possibly be? I guess GTA Five seems bigger because you have this giant mountain out, out there, and then there's stuff on the other side of the mountain or the sides of the mountain. Uh, but if you have like flat Florida and you have, you know, uh, the, the city, uh, to the South and then maybe some open area Everglades, whatever out there, uh, uh, North or, uh, to the sides of it and stuff, it just doesn't seem like it'd be a very big map, but if they can expand it to other countries, then that would, uh, be pretty cool. So thank you for the email though, Rips. Appreciate it. Hi, Hugo. Hope you're well out of all the GTA games you run. What would you say are your favorite and least favorite part or parts of these? Are there any parts and runs that you are usually less confident with or dread doing? You've mentioned before about gang wars in San Andreas. Wondered if there was anything else you particularly don't or do enjoy? Keep up the good work. From who brought me here. Thank you, who brought me here. Appreciate it. Um, Yeah, I uh, hate gang territories. I hate the... I, I get it. I understand the idea, but I just don't like having to, you know do a bunch of these just to get to the final mission i feel like it could have been, been done differently but uh i get it uh other slow tedious missions distribution in vice city where you got to do 50 ice cream uh deals that's a hassle and i dread doing that um 
GTA Five, I guess there's not really anything specifically like that. Some of the missions are very slow and um, like uh, scouting the port and yoga and stuff like that. Stuff you can't just breeze through quickly or figure out a way to get around the slow parts. So anything that's uh, slow and boring um, or tedious is, yeah, I'm not a big fan of that at all. But uh, thank you. Uh, who brought me here? Uh, next one. Hey, Hugo. My question is, why hasn't there been a remaster of GTA 4 from Cucker 1992? Thank you, Kuchar, or Cucker, as Justin has said. Thank you, Justin. Good job. Um, I would say because... Uh, I maybe we're just not at a point where a remaster of it would make sense yet. Hopefully soon they could announce it tomorrow. And I think that'd be awesome. But so you just had kind of like the first kind of, I guess, real remasters. And people would argue that of the trilogy that came out prior to GTA four. Um, although there was a Grand Theft Auto San Andreas remastered, it was called remastered, although it was just the mobile port. And then, uh, you know, I guess prior to that, any kind of anniversary edition was just mobile shit for the trilogy. Um, but now, yeah, we're we're pretty far away from the initial release of GTA 4, so I would be happy to see some kind of uh, re-release um, or remaster or something of that sort. But uh, who knows, because I don't know that there's any kind of information out there about that, but who knows? They could be keeping it under wraps. Thank you, Kuchar. Appreciate it. In GTA San Andreas, how would you feel if they were to ever extend the San Andreas story or have a mod come out for the game that would extend the end of the story starting in the mission end of the line where when you get to Big Smoke, the mod would let you choose to go down a different path, choosing to try and save Smoke instead of Sweet, trying to change Smoke's mentality, causing Smoke to change his mind and return to the Grove and had to plan to find and rescue Sweet. What would you think on a story extension like that or similar to that? Or just a cool expansion in general, cause I won't lie. Still to this day the San Andreas story, still tops all the other cast storylines and I feel like Rockstar could put more heart and time into the storyline and have more gang related stuff and really give the next GTA game a more GTA feel like the older GTA storylines <laughs> and you have a good day at well Hugo. I don't usually get to watch you on Twitch, but I usually watch you on YouTube when I have extra time and all I have to say is keep it up man and keep making your speedruns funny as hell man and I'm excited to see your future speedruns have in store from Chevy. Thank you Chevy. Sorry, Justin was saying Gata Gata. He's saying GTA so if the uh, Gata Gata was GTA. Anyway, um, yeah, no I think San Andreas story is great as well. I agree and I think for those of us that have played it a bunch that know the characters very well uh, if we did have some kind of option like I was talking about before where these games give you options and what you want to do, uh, you know it would be interesting if we could kind of save smoke or stop him from doing what he's doing or you know whatever leave sweet in jail who knows i don't know but yeah that would that would be cool uh in in reality i don't i don't think rockstar's ever gonna expand on that story i think they're done and that's one of the th reasons they talk about different universes for uh new gta games so yeah i think they're done there but that would have been pretty cool thank you for the email though what's happening homeboy huge gta a fan my fave gta game and enjoy of the streams when I can catch them. When I heard you were doing a podcast and was also asking for fan mail for said podcast, I nearly flipped. I was like once Hugo got on the mic, then the porty got started. <laughs> Hopefully it hasn't been asked yet since I just started watching the first episode. But the big question for me is how do you personally feel about the overall world design progression in the GTA series throughout the years? In terms of a gameplay aspect, things like shortcut alleyways for driving, hiding, verticality, like buildings you can hide on, snipe from, grab a free helicopter, etc. Interiors off the beaten path, fixed course bonds like the banshee in the Harwood showroom, weapon pickups, pay and sprays, collectibles, shops, pedestrians within a certain region, gang members in Los Angeles, Elvis clones tourists in Las Venturas, Triangles in Firo etc and things of that nature that more or less immerse you within the world of Grand Theft Auto. And of course, how do you feel about the maps in terms of artistic direction over the years? The skies, oceans, buildings, natural terrain. Again, I think the past GTA games were incredible when it came to stuff like that, not to discredit how much work went into GTA V. But man, GTA 3 had that murky early 2000s feel to it especially if you're just driving through any part of the city. Like the sun is literally non-existent. 
There's also this gas pipeline that splits the islands and it was always just harmonious to me with the grey water around it. It always scared me as a kid. Vice City had this almost fantasy ocean water with that iconic sparkle to it and cool sunset. San Andreas had very spooky weather when a storm drew and fog rolled in. Plus other memorable moments like getting lost those creepy woods in Flint County at night or when the skies in Bone County turned purple at dusk. And 4 literally just felt like New York. Talk about it wow. Huh? I don't know if you've ever played him, but the whole switch from the cartoony colors of the 3D games to be more grounding and clear in GTA 4 and V remind me of Fallout. The third and fourth 3D entries in that series had green and orange tints respectively and then when they switched to next gen for the subsequent entry, the tint was ultimately abandoned in favor of a more clear feel, which I actually really loved. Just an interesting tidbit to kinda explain what I mean about the GTA colors. Overall. Do you feel Rockstar is keeping the maps fresh, unique and fun as time goes on or do you prefer the style of the classic pre-HD universe maps? Could they learn from other games open worlds or should they focus on being original? I know they can't go back to that style in this current day and age due to how much technology has changed for the better, but I personally like the old maps way better in terms of replayability, memorability and charm. Pedestrians were quotable iconic actually feel like they fit in the world and are not just filler. The city districts are easier to remember plus had cooler names and the map in general is just easier to learn, especially useful for speedrunning. GTA V's map just doesn't do much for me in regard to Los Santos and I hate how small the city feels. May not be small in actuality, but it feels small to me. Don't know if you feel the same way. Also, what was your Hold on, before I move on, I want to kind of answer that. Um, I think uh, I love Los Santos and GTA 5. I think they did a great job kind of uh, um, making it more detailed and uh, had all its different kind of neighborhoods and, and areas and stuff. And so I loved it. I thought it was great. Um, as far as the maps, I do like, I mean, San Andreas is my favorite map ever just because you had these amazing cities and then you had all these places in between that were different like you said i thought that was awesome i loved it also gta 5 or gta 3 rather uh, gta 3 i think i don't know if there's just a whole lot of nostalgia for me because that was my first gta game but yeah i also love that liberty city and the way things look gta 4's liberty city i thought i the detail of it was awesome and i liked that about it i did not like kind of the the colors sometimes things would be super gray or super brown and i thought because it was so detailed, it needed a uh, larger kind of like palette of colors, I guess. Um, so that's kind of my thought on those. But but Vice City, again, with that, yeah, I thought Vice City's map worked perfect with it. It, it went uh, perfectly. I thought it looked great. Um, but yeah, lots of good thoughts there. Let me go ahead and continue on. Your favorite GTA speedrun that you've done so far? My favorite still had to be the co-op chaos mod you did with Derek. It was hilarious and fun to watch. I almost forgot you had a timer going. I would love co-op in a future GTA game, but I admit I'm not exactly sure how they would work. Again, thanks for taking the time to answer these emails from people. Apologize if mine was too long or a bit confusing to read through. I was just excited to share some thoughts on the GTA world. Good luck with the future podcast episodes. Remember, sweet Zabusta. But you, Hugo, you DMing. Mang, Patrick. Thank you, Patrick, for the email. Appreciate it. Yeah, co-op uh, in San Andreas was awesome. I thought it was a lot of fun. It kind of gave a whole new experience to that game. I think they could figure out an easy way to do co-op in a future GTA game where you, if they're uh, hopefully, you know, good, putting together a good single player storyline, they could just kind of figure out how if you added two people into it, how would these missions go? Because I could think of GTA 5 where you could just kind of go through a lot of those shootouts with with two people and because they want such a major online component that would be a good way to get people online and playing together and stuff uh so i would love a uh, co-op in a future gta game thank you so much for the email friend appreciate it what would your dream gta be like so like characters missions vehicles would it be modern or future or even maybe like mafia said in the 20s mine would be every city in one so san andreas vice city liberty city and even the towns from manhunt and bully would be interesting to see from ethan thank Thank you, Ethan. Uh, I've heard somebody from Rockstar had mentioned that years ago that they wanted to do a GTA World or GTA America or something where they had all their cities connected. And maybe that is some kind of uh, in the plans for the next step uh, when the next um, when GTA 6 comes out, because GTA 5's map, I think, still looks good. And I think it could work being connected to a Vice City 
uh, or wherever else they decide to make the next one. Um, and you can go between them for whatever reason. But uh, me, my dream GTA would be a new Los Venturas updated modern day Los Venturas with uh, some kind of way to, uh, you know, uh, take down casinos, uh, run your own casino, whatever the case may be. Um, something that would be interesting. I, I wouldn't want anything way back in like the twenties or back too far, but some, uh, maybe like you have like an evolving map, uh, through the storyline where it starts in maybe the seventies and you play a little, and then you jump forward to the eighties, the nineties, you see the map changing, you see the world changing your character ages, Stuff like that. That would be pretty cool. They may be limited with what they can do, but that would be pretty awesome. Thank you for the email, though, friend. Hello, Hugo. I'm a big fan. I would like to know your thoughts on the theory that Lance from GTA Vice City had another brother, and that is Tinpenny from GTA San Andreas PS. Hope you see this. From Peter Griffin. Thank you, Peter Griffin, for the email. Appreciate it. I've never heard that theory that Lance had another brother, and it's Tenpenny from San Andreas. That would be a, an interesting way to connect the games uh, and the characters again. Um, I don't know. That's pretty interesting. Uh, I don't think it's true. I have no reason to think it's true, but if uh, uh, there's some uh, more evidence out there that suggests it is, that would be interesting to hear, but it's a good theory. Thank you for sharing. Appreciate it, friend. Hey, Hugo. GTA 4 is my personal favorite for many reasons. Me personally, I play it as a sandbox because the physics, in my opinion, is far superior to GTA 5 in most ways. What are your thoughts on this? What I don't understand is why it seems like Rockstar is adding all this really dumb and unnecessary shit for GTA Online and stuff kids find appealing. What about the SOG players? We are at least the correct age. Kids aren't even meant to be playing it. So why are they trying to make it so appealing to a younger audience? Is it because they know they can squeeze money out from sharp card sales? I have no hope for GTA 6. In my opinion it's going to suffer too much from force injection to please certain people. I strongly believe Rockstar has lost its way when it comes to their fan base. Why don't we ever have a say? From Marcus. Thank you Marcus for the email. Um, as far as GTA 4 goes, I was when GTA 4 came out I was just not a huge fan just because it was so different from San Andreas. It was not what I was expecting at all. It did feel so different. You know, it was on a new uh, generation of consoles and uh, a lot had changed so i didn't get really into it until years later uh gta 5 was more what i was expecting from uh gta 4 or uh something like that so i like gta 5 a lot uh still do um as far as uh stuff that kids find appealing uh, well i mean people have grown up with this game somebody uh who started playing this game when they were maybe 13 or something are in their 20s now you know which is wild so um i guess it just has to evolve but it has evolved to a place online that is a bit too futuristic for me but uh yeah i understand what you're saying i don't know what rockstar's kind of uh plan is now and i wonder if you know maybe that's why so many people left because it became something different. So I don't know what to expect for GTA six, but I'm definitely going to give it a chance when, when it releases, I will be cautiously optimistic and uh, I will judge it based on whatever they put out. But thank you for the email friend. Hello, Hugo. Love your podcast, making my stereo in the car busy and fun to drive this times. What do you think about the idea of making Cube storyline in the future of Taz? Each player learn their story about character they play and you have fun with your friend while making progress in the story. What do you think from Marcus? Thank you, Marcus. Yeah, I we just talked about that. Somebody else had mentioned that. So yeah, I think that would be a great idea. I think they could do that. I know that there's co-op in um, Saints Row, I, which I've never played, but uh, I think they could uh, make it happen for sure. And I think that would be a lot of fun. I, uh, I hope they do. I hope there's at least an option for it, you know? Hey, Hugo. Firstly, I'd like to thank you for the podcasts. It's great to see a podcast centered around GTA and it's fascinating to hear others' thoughts about Rockstar. Keep up the great work. I'd like to ask if you've ever played the Manhunt games or Bully. Manhunt was an even bolder risk than with GTA 3 as Manhunt was released two years after and had far more controversy. With Manhunt 2 having even more controversy. I absolutely love the first game and I highly recommend it. Also a neat little fact is that Manhunt shares a universe with GTA. Being in the 3D universe and it's implied the main protagonist originates from the state of San Andreas. Once again, keep up the excellent work in speedruns. Very enjoyable to watch. From Robbie. Thank you, Robbie. Uh, I have not played uh, Manhunt 
at all, and uh, I've heard things about it, and I've heard it's pretty crazy. Uh, I will give it a try one day. Um, it may be a little too scary for me, but I'll I'll get through it just to see what uh, is happening in the 3D universe outside of the GTAs. Uh, Bully, I played a couple of times. When Bully came out, it just didn't look like it was something I would be interested in just because, it, uh, you know, I just... I just didn't get it, you know, like uh, the the kid being at school and, you know, this, that and the other. Obviously, I can relate to school, but uh, did, that was a very different world than I knew. So um, it was uh, fun the few times I played it, uh, but I've not bothered to go back and play anymore. But uh, I probably will someday. Now, if they announced a bully, too. I'd be on the first bully right away. Same thing with Red Dead Redemption 2 when that was announced. I played Red Dead Redemption 1 for the first time. And the reason I skipped that is because it was like this Western feel that I didn't have any interest in. I didn't think it would be for me. So I didn't give it a try until Red Dead 2 came out. And I was so starved for new uh, video game content and wanted to play Red Dead 2. I got into Red Dead 1, liked it liked Red Dead 2, so maybe the same thing will happen with Bully. Anyway, thank you, Robbie, for the email. Appreciate it, appreciate it. Okay, that's it for emails. Now, if you send another email and I didn't get to it, I'm trying to focus mostly on the kind of GTA stuff and not so much the uh, personal questions or whatever, so um, that is it for the emails for today. Uh, let's move on to the phone call. All right, let's go to the phones. Hello, caller. You're on Chatterbox. Yo, what's up, Hugo? This is uh, M Toms 127 I had a good idea the other day for uh, GTA 6 Online. You think it'd be cool if they had a kind of a live radio station with an actual DJ or, you know, DJs, it'd have to be plural, um, and they play, you know, actual different music every time, not just a set playlist and a set, you know, recorded DJ. It'd have to be online only, but I think it'd be cool. Um I don't know if it would be like in universe, like the DJ's pretending like he's actually in GTA or if he acknowledges the fact that he's in a video game, but I think it's a good idea. Um, second, I was on Twitter the other day and I noticed that Rockstar tweeted out something about the Queen of England dying. It got me thinking, I was like, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure Queen Elizabeth II never played GTA in her life. And uh, I'm thinking, you know, when you die, Hugo, there's no way Rockstar's going to tweet out a goddamn thing. So I bet that pissed you right off, didn't it? Uh, that's, that's all. Anyway, uh, so uh, to your first point, I think that's actually pretty interesting. The uh, idea that there's uh, like a live DJ, a real radio station online. I think that would be really cool. I never thought of that before, actually. Um, and uh, maybe they could take requests from the players and stuff. They could shout out. Oh, so, you know, uh, uh, Dick Sucker 69 is doing heist with his his uh, little buddy or whatever. Uh, and uh, this this goes out to you. Something like that. That would be pretty cool. I think that's a great idea, actually. Actually, um, uh, and then they could touch on real world events like the queen dying. They could uh, break the news in GTA online. Therefore, the, you know, kids can be, uh, kids, adults, whoever's playing can be informed about the stuff they're missing out in the real world. So, uh, good idea. Uh, fuck the last part of that shit. Thank you for the phone call though. I'm Tom's. Hey, Hugo, what's up? This is Michael from Tiffin, Iowa. And I just had a quick question for you. Okay. So would you rather play? a Grand Theft Auto based game where you are CJ in the five years you spent on the East Coast in Liberty City or a game where you play as Tommy Rossetti in uh, Liberty City leading up to the Harwood Butcher incident or would you rather play a GTA based game where you play as Claude in San Andreas preferably the San Fierro district where you already have the garage or you maintain possession of the garage and you just kind of explore his uh, San Andreas lifestyle before booking it to Liberty City with Catalina. Also, thanks for all the great content and keep up the great work. Thanks to you, there. Bye. Thank you, Michael. That's a, that's a great idea. I actually would like all of those. I wish I wish Rockstar had like a division that said, okay, we have all these great characters. We have all these great maps uh, let's, you know, put this in the mobile department and make these games, mobile games, like, you know, CJ playing in, uh, 
Liberty City or whatever, or, or Tommy and Liberty City or Claude and San Fierro. I think those would be awesome, like little like short games that I, I just think mobile would make the most sense since that's a uh, a way people can consume those. That's our our handheld uh, devices, gaming devices of the day. So, yeah, I've never thought about any stuff like that, but I think that's awesome. If I had to pick one of those. Uh, I would probably pick CJ and Liberty City just because I like the character of CJ best. Although Tommy and Liberty City would be great. And Claude, Claude, not so fun, seeing as the other two can speak and Claude cannot. But Claude in San Fierro would be pretty cool. I would like to see that. I'd like to see all those. But uh, thank you for the uh, phone call. Appreciate it. Hey, you go. It's George. Um, so when people like complain about gta taking forever to come out i know it's been like since 2013 and they had all the updates <clears throat> on online but just think like madden ea they pump out all these games every year and it's the same horse shit so i do not mind that rockstar takes seven, eight, nine, ten years to make a pristine game. Like, I do not mind that. Um, so just relax, calm down, and I think that once Rockstar comes out with GTA 6, uh, the game will be pristine. I mean, you're going to have haters either way, but I, I, I honestly cannot wait to play it. And Love the podcast, love the stream, and also Lance is way worse than Sweet. Take care, bud. Later. I disagree. Sweet is the worst of all time, but thank you, George, for the call. Um, uh, yeah, I agree. I, if they're gonna make, if they're gonna, you know, have like a big major leap forward with the next GTA, I don't mind that it's taken a while. Uh, I hope that it's like a groundbreaking release and it's just uh, awesome all the way around. Uh, and again, like you said, people will still hate it. Um, but as far as um, Madden and EA and the sports games that are the same every year or Call of Duty or whatever, I agree. I don't want something that's basically the same. Uh, so I guess it's good that they put in work in online because that's kind of what you're getting there. You're just getting different missions on the kind of same map or whatever. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, happy to wait as well, George. Thank you, friend. Hey, Hugo. It's Clay Doggy again. Uh, look, man, I'm just going to say something super controversial, and I'm uh, more than happy to be the only person on Earth who thinks this way. But, like, yeah, the Definitive Edition trilogy, yeah, it, it's not that bad, man. It's pretty fun. I don't know. Like, I don't get everybody's hate on these games. Uh, like, I've been playing GTA since 2, back on the PlayStation 1. Uh, I was there for three in Vice City and San Andreas and all that stuff. And I love them to this day. They're great. And, but playing the Definitive Editions now, uh, I've kind of moved on, man. Like, I've moved up to the DEs because, you know, they're cleaned up. Uh, I play on console, so I don't have a load time between islands anymore. I have a, a right stick that can control the camera. I think those are great improvements. Uh, they're buggy. I get it. They need more patches to be done, and I don't think Rockstar or Take Two or you know Grocery Games or whoever is you know even working on them right now. I don't think we're going to get any more patches for them, which sucks. But you know what? The OG versions are broken as hell too, and they need patches 20 years later. So I think everybody just needs to calm down. Just enjoy the games for what they are and have a good time. Uh, much love, you go. Keep it going. See you, bye. Thank you, Clay Dog. You appreciate it. I think that's very well said. I think a lot of people miss the fact that, if, for one, if you do play on console, that this is an upgrade over probably what you were playing on. Uh, and a lot of people that are playing the Definitive Edition haven't been playing uh, GTA games over the years. Uh, so they don't compare them directly and they just enjoy them and have a good time. And that's fine. Uh, so the people that are, that do hate on them, they're just so angry that it didn't, uh, they didn't put out a perfect kind of like remake of these games. Uh, they just remastered it and added all the things that a modern day player would want and put it out and put all three games together for $60. And I think that's a good deal. And it's there for those that want it for those that don't, hopefully you still have the old ones. If you don't, they're back on rockstar games launcher. So, uh hopefully all that hate and stuff will die down but i agree there should be more patches i wish they would i wish they would at least talk to us about what's happening do they plan more do they not are they not going to do it whatever 
Uh, but you know, they're, they don't have anything to say and why would they, people are fucking attacking them on Twitter and stuff. So it's, uh, pretty crazy, uh, how people feel about those games, but thank you, Clay Dog. appreciate it. Hello. Let me pull on your dick a little while. I heard about that big old dick you got. Hugo One, talking GTA. I got an important question for you, man. Which GTA protagonist gives the best head? I'm talking dick licking. I'm talking wiener suckling. And I'm talking a testicle festival that all may enjoy. I am eagerly awaiting your response, Hugo. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, I'm gonna say probably Trevor, but thank you for the call. Hey, it's Hugo, it's Scottish Raccoon back again. Just wanted to get your opinion on expanding the sports in the next game. So obviously we had golf and tennis and GTA Five. Just like what kind of sports and stuff you'd like to see. And the last for one would like to see like you know, a baseball a game implemented, even if it's just like if it isn't a full game, just like hitting kind of bat and pack or something like that. But yeah, what's your opinion? See you there. Thank you, Scottish Raccoon. Uh, I thought that I would like sports in GTA more, like tennis and golf in 5. When I played it, they were just so simple that I just was kind of bored with them, I guess, just because I'd played uh, golf and tennis games that I liked a lot more. So uh, I do appreciate that they are there if you want to do them. I like the idea of different activities and stuff uh, around the world to make the world feel like there is a lot of variety in it. Uh, A baseball game probably would be pretty fun. I always thought they missed an opportunity with that baseball stadium in Las Venturas. They could add some easy baseball game or something there. Uh, The basketball in San Andreas was never that great. You know, it was cool to see, cool that you could do it, but obviously didn't feel like, you know, a real basketball game or anything like that. Um, But yeah, I would be happy for more sports. Darts was actually a lot of fun in five. I didn't bowl much in four. Um, I'm trying to think what else there was, but, uh, well, whatever the case may be, uh, I'll at least try them. If I like them, I'll continue to play, but it would be cool to have maybe like leagues or leaderboards online in the future for new, uh, sports games within GTA. That would be cool. But thank you for the call friend. What to do is you go tell a long time fan of the channel for a couple of years now, and I'm a recent Twitch subscriber. I've interacted with your uh, streams for a bit, but due to schedule, I wasn't able to uh, stay for a full stream, but I'm hoping I have the opportunity once my schedule's free. But I'll get straight to the point. Uh, what is your opinion on licensed vehicles like Chevrolet, Nissan, or Mitsubishi being in the next GTA, that being six? Uh, personally, I wouldn't like this idea, or I'll doubt this idea, per se, because of another rock star title named Midnight Club as a racing game um, at the time, like GTA, parody vehicles from their real-life counterparts and had the freedom to run over pedestrians. Ever since the third installment onward, they moved to licensed vehicles and removed the ability altogether because they would believe that uh, car manufacturers wouldn't like the idea of people playing a game where it's that they can not only harm or kill people within their vehicles, but also do damage to their vehicles, such as blowing out tires, busting out windows, or just destroying or exploding the entire car as a whole. Following that same logical threat that followed, in my opinion, it would just disregard the entire game as a whole as it was intended to be an entire parody on everything in America from the culture, politics, media, and stereotypes. Not only have I brought this up because of the modding community are able to mod, you know, mod and uh, bring those actual real-life manufactured cars into the game, such as in the single player or doing role play on the PC. Um, but yeah, I don't want to know your opinion on that and see if you like the idea or maybe they should, maybe Rockstar should just stick to parody vehicles to avoid any Legal issues, copyright, or like paying lots of royalties to like Porsche or Mitsubishi, or just all these car manufacturers as a whole. As a whole. But I love and respect you, and I'll take care. I'm looking, looking forward to the future, Matt. Peace. Thank you for the call, friend. Appreciate it. Maybe you'll invite me to the cave you're living in one day because that uh, sounds pretty cool in there. But no, thank you for the call. Uh, no, I'm with you 100%. I like when there's real cars in, in some games, like racing games and stuff. But for a GTA game, I like the like kind of parody ones they have. I uh, think they have more freedom to kind of come up with different uh, styles and uh, different stuff. That's pretty cool. And then your point about running pedestrians over if it was a real car the company might not want that or i guess in another game they didn't want that so yeah that could not be a thing in san andreas the, i mean sorry uh, in gta um in a gta game you have to be able to run over pedestrians it's part of the fun um 
you know, that stopped people from doing it in real life, I hope. Uh, but yeah, I am cool with the way they have the car situation set up now. Thank you for the phone call, friend. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Hey, Hugo One, it's your boy Rainfire from YouTube. Now, I have a question for you for the G next GTA 6 coming up. Now, there's a mod out there that's called America, United Americas, right? Consists of Vice City, San Andreas, and Liberty City. What would you think about having all three of those combined into the same game? And how would you like to do a speed run on that? That's question one. And I had to reflect on your last podcast. And you said the hardest mission was the main thing in San Andreas. But the way I've seen some of your videos, and I saw that Vice City one when you did Mr. Whoopi mission with the cheat code thing, that was off the charts. Insane, dude. You spent two hours on that mission and then so. So I don't know, brother. <laughs> what you mentioned was really hard, but with the addition of that cheat code thing, dude, that shit made it retarded. That shit was funny as fuck to watch. I just thought I'd share that with you, man, and I hope this makes it to your podcast. So let me know what you think about that United Americas, because you know how we like San Andreas being as huge as it was in that exploration. Tell me what you know. Let's hear it. Much love from your boy. Peace out. Thank you, Rainfire. I appreciate it. I uh, think uh, I haven't played that mod. Uh, I've heard of it, and it sounds cool. And we kind of talked about earlier there being uh, just a, a map with uh, all different cities and stuff. I, if they could pull it off and do it right, then I think it would be great. I would love that. I think it would be awesome. So, yeah, I would do that. I don't, I don't mind you know, the really long games or a lot of content, as long as the content is fun and there's a lot of action, a lot of stuff to be done. So, uh, yeah, sounds great. Uh, as far as, uh, first of all, the, 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 the Da Nang thing, I don't think it's like the hardest mission, but, uh, I, I just, uh, had thought that uh, there was some something hard to it and something easy to it in that mission. But, uh, yeah, distribution in vice city. Uh, anytime you add some kind of crazy, um, change to the game, then some mission that might've been easy before becomes incredibly difficult. Uh, when I did uh one HP, uh, San Andreas for the first time and did the mission, a home in the Hills, it took me over four hours to beat it. Just one mission took me over four hours to beat it. Uh, uh, OHKO. So it was uh wild, uh, experiencing these missions in a different way. And that's one of the reasons I like to play the games like that, where you play the same game, same missions you've always played, but there's something slightly different or something majorly different. And it gives you a whole different experience. But uh, thank you so much for the call, friend. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yo, here you go. Hopefully this is the right number. Nate Thomas one. Just wanted to let you know. Hell yeah. You're the homie. And uh, take care. Yeah. Fuck sweet, by the way. Thank you, Natomics, for the call. Appreciate it. This is the right number. Uh, so if you want to call, call 1-818-691-5807. Uh, yes, it's fuck sweet all day. Uh, if you want to send an email, talkinggta69 at gmail.com. Um, that's it. That's all I got for phone calls today. Uh, this was an awesome episode. I'm glad we talked about all the things we talked about. Thank you so much for contributing. Continue to contribute. I hope you guys enjoyed Justin. If not, we'll... Uh, We'll uh, give them the boot uh, and find somebody else. But uh, otherwise, quickly, I want to say thank you to YouTube members, Fanny, Jonathan, Sirowit, Zach, Lucas, Katsune, uh, and True Forever. Thank you guys again. Um, also, I want to tell you to go follow me on Twitch. Uh, if you emailed me something or sent, left a comment or whatever, you just want to shoot the shit about other stuff, non-GTA, come to Twitch, uh, usually 5.30 p.m. Eastern time, 5.00 days a week no thursdays no sundays and we're usually playing some kind of gta game you can jump in and talk and we can talk shit about whatever you want to talk about uh that's twitch.tv uh slash hugo underscore one on youtube hugo one hugo on streams hugo on shorts tiktok hugo underscore one underscore mang i'm so close to a thousand followers get your uh brother sister cousin nephew uh niece uh denise robinson everybody to follow me on tiktok hugo one mang so i can uh 
be cool with the uh, Gen Zs and stuff. Thank you for that, friends. Uh, by the way, if you're watching on YouTube, this is also available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, all the other places. So check it out on there. Check it out, friends. Uh, thank you for listening. Awesome stuff. I've enjoyed it very much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. Peace out. Goodbye.